thankful for that. Let's stand to our feet this morning as we get ready to enter in. So thankful for our, our guest speaker this morning, Dr. Kenny Flaming. Uh, we know we're going to be blessed by the word and by what the Lord has put in his heart for us. Uh, we're grateful for that. Let's enter into prayer this morning as we ask the Lord to have his own way. Father, we thank you this morning that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we get to come. And Lord, we're asking that you'd minister to every heart and every home represented here. Lord, I thank you that your arm is extended to all of our loved ones, even right now. Minister to them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done, what you're going to do, and Lord, what you're doing even right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I love you, Jesus. Oh, when I close my eyes, I can see your glory. When I raise my hands, I can touch your face. When I bow my knees, I stand before you. sing that verse when I close my eyes when I close my eyes I can see I can see your glory when I raise my hands I can touch your face when I bow my knees I stand for you I reflect your image when I break my will, oh, then I am whole. When I give my all, I find life everlasting in Christ. This for your glory oh and let my heart become a throne for you to dwell oh and when I need your Holy Spirit more than life itself oh then Christ is formed in me oh wake my soul Jesus this morning. Try and 
myself away. Lord, I give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself away. Lord, I give myself away.
Let's sing this together. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, Lord. Oh, pure and holy. Try and true. Oh, and with You know, a big difference between the Old Testament sacrifices and the sacrifice of Jesus and even our sacrifice is in the Old Testament, those animals, whether it was a lamb or a goat or a bull or a pigeon, a, a turtle dove, those sacrifices were not voluntary. The person would, they would sin, they would need a sacrifice, they would go find one. But that sacrifice was not if it didn't want to go, it didn't matter. That sacrifice had to go. But Jesus, when he came, he said, No man takes my life from me, but I lay it down of myself. Jesus was a willing sacrifice. He wanted to, because he loves us, he wanted to give us all. He wanted to lay his life down for us. And now under the new covenant, the sacrifice that we offer to him, which is the fruit of our lips and our own life being offered up to him, as a living sacrifice, it's not a, it's not an involuntary sacrifice. It's a, it's a voluntary. We volunteer, Lord. It's yours. He won't force us. He won't take control. He won't just arrest us. He, he says, I want you just to voluntarily come. Are you thankful for that today? That He just is wanting voluntary vessels, willing vessels to come and and give Him what we have, which is little, but He wants us to offer up to Him the sacrifice of our praise, the sacrifice that we have, which is really, it's Lord, I give You my nothing, and I receive Your everything. Mm. I'm so thankful for that today. Amen. Praise the Lord. I give myself away. If you need prayer this morning in your physical body, we want to pray for you, and we ask for you to come. And again, if you need prayer in your physical body, if you want to stay in the gap for someone else, please come and we're going to pray right now that the Lord would just touch you in a, in a physical, in a mighty way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus.
sing that one more time. clap for praise today praise the lord hallelujah would you turn around and just greet someone today just greet greet someone today it just good even if you don't want to Is that your prayer today? Yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, it's so good. It's so good to see every single one of you today. This is Mission Sunday. And uh, even though we're a local church and we, we want to reach our local community, but we have a vision just to reach the whole world. As Jesus said, go into, go into all the world and preach the gospel and uh, I'm, I'm just so I'm looking forward to this service, the rest of it. We have uh, Dr. Kenny Flaming with us is going to share. And uh, if you walked in and wondered who's that man wearing that 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 clothing, OK, it's just from, it, he'll explain it. All right. <laughs> but uh, I was going to try to wear my pack, of but it, it didn't. When I, when I don't have nothing like that. But uh, but if you have your bulletin, you'll see the announcements for this week. And again, I encourage you to put that bulletin on the on your refrigerator. Just pray for during the week. We have some birthdays this month and coming up, Jessica, on Friday. So happy birthday, early happy birthday to you, Jessica. And uh, and then Arlene uh, on Saturday. It's good. happy birthday to you, Arlene. Can we can we for the birthdays, birthday girls? Praise the Lord. And we have our Tuesday Bible study, of course, and then Thursday uh, prayer meeting right here at 10 a.m. Uh, Saturday, that's, uh, that's October 19th, this coming Saturday, we're having a men, we're having a men's Bible study. So men at 9 o'clock here. And so if you can make it men, we encourage you to do so. We, we have, um, we've had some really good men's Bible studies. And so if you can make it, I encourage you to do so, do so guys, this Saturday at, 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 uh, at, at 9 a.m. And then 
then there's some other uh, announcements there. Praise the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord with our, our giving today. And let me let you let me share this with you. At the end of the service, we're also taking another offering for Brother uh, Fleming to support his work there that he is doing. So we want to support him and bless him. Uh, and so just to want to let you know that. And uh, so let's uh, let's pray. Father, we're just so thankful today for the privilege of being able to worship you with our giving. Lord, everything that comes into our hand comes from your hand. And we give you glory and honor and praise. Lord, we ask and believe you, Lord, that your blessing would rest upon every individual, every household, and this church collectively. And we give you all the praise and glory. And everyone said amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, brother. announced it last week but man I, we are we are still just so thrilled with what God has done he's blessed us this church with our own facility and uh, it'll be some time before we hopefully we can close on it at the end of this month and and uh, we can get in there as soon as possible as soon as that church moves out but uh, which will be at the very latest February of next year but I'm telling you God has performed a miracle for this church he really has a blessing, a miracle, and I'm just so, just so thankful for that. God has some mighty and great things ahead uh, for you, for this church collectively, some great things ahead, and uh, he could come back today. I hope he does, but if he doesn't, watch out, devil, because here we come. We're, we got, we, we're going to take people out of darkness and bring them into light. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, is going to use every one of us to do it. We have some visitors, and I, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but brother, what's your name? Uh, Dave. Dave? Dave. McCann, good to have you, Dave. Praise the Lord. And then, uh, brother, sister back here. You're... I'm French. My wife, Phyllis. Fred and Phyllis. French. French and Phyllis. Okay. <laughs> and any other? Uh, no, I think that's it. Well, let's welcome you guys. It's good to have you guys. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you guys so much. Praise God. Samuel's got to get back to the soundboard there to help with the presentation here in just a moment. But, you know, when I was in Bible college, it was many years ago, I had heard the name Kenny Fleming, but it never, I had never <laughs> heard some terrible thing. No. <laughs> But I no, I'd heard the name Kenny Fleming, but never, never met him before personally. And um, I did meet him because Sharon ministered at their church for a woman's meeting. And I forget which year that was. And I think I might have met you then uh, briefly at that time. But it wasn't until just recently that I've really gotten to know uh, Dr. Kenny Fleming a little bit more and just growing in our friendship. But uh, when I heard last, um, I've heard it on SBN, but I've also heard it when, we went, when I went to Wichita this past August. Uh, him and his wife lived up there in Wichita now, and we went to lunch together, and he was sharing his story about how the Lord has opened up this door to Pakistan, and how the Lord had put that on his heart. And it just, it was just wow. It just leaped within me. And I just felt in my spirit, we got to have Brother Kenny come to Covenant Church and share what God is doing. And so, uh, and so can you welcome him this morning as he comes and on this Mission Sunday? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I lose too many of those. 
Well, it is an honor to be with you uh, this morning. Um, we are, well, first off, I want to say it's good to see Brother Dave. Brother Dave and I go back about somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 years. Um, his wife, Sister Beverly, this is Dave McCann, his wife, Sister Beverly, um, was part of the church that I got saved in. Brother Dave's brother-in-law, Beverly's brother, Mike, the, it was January of 1984, Brother Larry Henson came and preached a revival. I was a high school senior, alcoholic, I was a mess. Brother Larry Henson, you, some of y'all were, were in Nashville, many of you heard of the Henson family. Brother Larry Henson, the youngest brother, was, had left the, left the group and he was doing evangelistic work and he preached. Uh, there's a whole backstory between the Hensons and our church. Um, but Brother Larry came and preached a revival and I, gave, I walked up and gave our, my heart to the Lord. We, at, the altars are normally up front. They were over on the side for some reason, but I went and I gave my heart to the Lord. And I was crying and bawling, didn't know what to do. But Brother Dave's brother, Mike, who became a friend later, came up. And prayed with me and helped me find my way to the Lord. But uh, so, Brother David, it's good to see you today. And uh, uh, his wife's not able to be here. I guess she's singing in Texas. Yeah, Amen. Well, my name is Kenny Flaming. I'm your missionary to Pakistan, and it is a blessing to be here. I, I thank the Lord for the opportunity. The, the praise and worship this morning, all it couldn't have been orchestrated any better. In what I, I, I really feel on my heart. I'm going to tell you my story and tell you how we got from a little town of Merced, California to where we are today. Um, but I want to preface that by saying all of us at times have promises that the Lord has given us. And we know that we know that we know that we know that the Lord spoke that to our heart. But it seems like there's, we go through that dark hallway between the promises given and the promise actualized. And we get to a place where we think, well, that's never going to happen. Maybe I miss God. I don't know what I'm thinking. I don't know what I'm doing. But let me tell you this morning, God has got a plan and a purpose and a calling for you. That's my wife, Tammy. And how we came to work and to be a part of what we're doing is it goes back to 1987. I was a first year Bible college student at JSBC. I don't remember, it was, I believe, in the fall. I couldn't tell you the month or the date. And I don't remember who preached. I don't remember what was the message was. I don't remember anything about that particular service but I remember from from the platform it was over here on my right hand side and I was kneeling down actually I was like most of the Bible college students we called it second carpet <laughs> flat on my face ball into the Lord and the Lord spoke to me he said he said I've called you to minister to Muslims I'm from Central California. I didn't know anything about Islam. I didn't know anything. I, I knew one Muslim person. And oddly enough, this is not, this is just, he ran, they ran a convenience store, Country Boy Market on Beachwood. They might remember that. Nice guy. Didn't know anything about Islam. Didn't know anything about the Muslim religion. And we went through life. I went home and told my wife. She doesn't remember that. I remember it. She doesn't remember that. But the Lord put that on my heart. And, and I thought, how in the world is this? Nobody from Central California. How will that ever happen? I said, okay, Lord. I put it on the shelf. I said, Lord, if that's you, you're going to bring it to pass. And from time to time, I think about it. I thought, well, that's, a, that's an impossibility. But. In 2019, we pastored in Louisiana. We, we recently moved from Abbeville, Louisiana, uh, southeast Louisiana. 
And we pastored there for the last 10 years. We've been in, we were in Louisiana basically pastoring the last 25 plus years. And in 2019, the Lord put on my heart. He said, I want you to pray about traveling overseas and preaching. I'm a bivocational pastor in a little church, in a little town. No one's heard of. No one knows. You know, who? I don't. How in the world am I ever? I don't preach the camp meetings and the camp meetings. None of that. And all of a sudden, I get a message, an email from the, I began to pray about it. And Lord began to lay on my heart an area to minister. I thought, Lord, I don't, how in the world is this, will this ever happen? And in 2019, I got a message from the overseer of Pakistan for the denomination that I was with. Pakistan was one of the countries that I was praying about. And I got a, a message from the overseer. He says, I want you to come. I want you to come to Pakistan. I want you to, to, to uh, minister in our churches and preach and teach in our churches. And I thought, okay, Lord, this is it. Me and my associate traveled in uh, 2020, in March of 2020. And you all remember what was going on in March of 2020. We, when we returned back to the States, it was the exact time when everything was unfolding. If we'd have been left, if we'd have stayed in Pakistan one more day, we would have been locked in country because of COVID. And let me, let me give you a little something. When we, were tra when we traveled to Pakistan in 2020, we traveled under a, uh, it's very hard to get into Pakistan. We traveled under a missionary visa because we had a, a recognized church organization in Pakistan invited us. And so we were allowed to travel with a, a missionary visa. We made application. We, we went in March. We made application, started the process in December. We did the process. They contacted us. We had to add a few documents here and there, and they had to verify that the organization invited us. And so we got everything in order, and we submitted it, and we waited. We've raised money for our trip. We, we've been prepared for the trip, and we couldn't get a visa. We can't, we're not, I'm not buying tickets until I get a visa. A month goes by, two months go by. We get into March. We get through the first thing, and I'm emailing them. What do, you, do you need anything? I need a visa. Oh, just wait. Do you need anything? Just wait. We are, we are planning to leave on a Sunday, and it's the Wednesday before I don't have a visa. My friend doesn't have a visa. What do we do? I email them. They're 12, roughly 12 hours ahead of us. I email them when I go to bed. I wake up the morning. My reply was, just keep waiting. <laughs> I, was, I went outside to get my, my work truck ready for the day. And I'm, I'm, I know none of you have ever done this, but I was, I was complaining, whining to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm supposed to leave Four days. People have given to us. We have worked. We've fundraised. We've done all of these things. We've sent money. Ahead, all of this. And I need we, need, we need a visa. It's the last minute. And I asked the Lord something. I said, Lord, will you, I, I know you're faithful. I believe you're going to come through. But my faith is weak. I know no one's ever been there. But I said, Lord, would you remind me of a time when at the last minute you came through? <laughs> Immediately. I won't go in. I don't take the time. But he reminded me of a situation. It's a wonderful story. He reminded me. I said, all right, Lord. After I whined. He reminded me. I went back in. And I picked up my cell phone that I left in the house. And my, the associate that was, we were traveling together, he goes, check your email. So I went and grabbed my email. Boom. Pakistan Visa Society, you were approved. Everything's good. So while I was outside whining and complaining to the Lord, my approval had already come. So we traveled in, in, in 2020. Um, we traveled with the Church of God. We, we uh, the brother, uh, Brother Kerry Lacoste is there. 
he traveled with me. He was our, one of our associates, and, and we, were in, we were in Abbeville, and we traveled. And one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to bring Bibles. It was on our heart to bring Bibles into Pakistan. And so we brought these. Many of you have seen them on SBN. These are the, the Outreach Edition Expositor Study Bibles. We brought 25 probably maybe 30 of these in our luggage. We paid for an extra piece of luggage so we could have an extra 50 pounds to put our, you know, we packed as light, put as many clothes, uh, uh, Bibles as we could and not go over the 50 pound limit. But the ministry did something else unique. They sent us these thumb drives. This is a, just a, a simple thumb drive. But on this thumb drive is the study Bible uh, in a, a electronic form, uh, one of Brother Swaggart's albums, and a study guide, one of his study guides that had been already translated into the Pakistani language, which is Urdu. And the good thing about these is when you, you know, these, these weigh two or three pounds, whatever they weigh. You can only carry so many, but you can put a hundred of these in a Ziploc bag. They weigh two pounds. We took hundreds of these. And the thing, I can give it to a pastor. He can put it on his device, and he can take it out, and he can give it to the next pastor and to the next pastor. There's no limit. There's no license. There's no unlock code. Everything was, it was just so, I don't, we don't know how many of those have been transferred around Pakistan. But we began to take Bibles. We, we, uh, that's our motel. That's some of the Bibles. We bought some of the other Bibles to give to some pastors and, and uh, their wives. But we traveled uh, to, I think, six or eight cities in Pakistan, and we ministered, and we we did what the Lord had opened the door. And after that first trip, I was hooked. I knew that this was, what some, this was something that God was calling me to do. Since then, we've, the Lord is beginning to open the doors in Indonesia, which is the world's largest Muslim country. Uh, he's opening the doors in United Arab Emirates, which uh, has Dubai, which is another extremely large Muslim nation. Um, we traveled to Indonesia last year, and we brought Bibles, and we brought, uh, uh, we didn't bring the thumb drives, we brought just the Bibles, but the Lord is opening the door in that, and one of the things about Indonesia is uh, I met a former JSBC student who's a missionary there, um, and we were telling her, you know, this is what we, uh, you know, we want to get these Bibles in, and she kind of said, well, there's a problem with Indonesia because of the weather, it's so humid, books don't really do well, and she's a school teacher, so she said, what what we do with all of our students is, is they all have uh, the, like a think pad, you know, that students carry. And most of all of their curriculum and most of the books that we get from the different publishers are on a thumb drive. So instead of having to figure out a way to ship as many of these, there's a good possibility we can distribute these because everyone is set up for it. So Lord's opened the door for Indonesia, uh, United Arab Emirates, and we are we're pursuing the opportunity. Um, right now they're in a very difficult situ uh, situation. They're, they're in a civil war. Um, we are believing God's going to open the door for us for Bangladesh as well. Um, so the Lord just took this nobody wet behind the ears kid from Central California and has given us an opportunity to do great things. But like Paul said, a great and effectual door is open unto me, and there's many adversaries. When we begin to walk in what God has called us to do, the enemy is going to come and try to stop and hinder what we've done. But that doesn't take away, that doesn't de delineate, that doesn't take away from the calling that God has put on our life. So let me share a little bit of what we've done. I want to hurry. Pakistan is a, the fifth most populous country. It has a population of about 227. Now it's about 240 million people. Um, the, the U.S. population is 330. So Pakistan is about 75% of the population of the United States, but it's crammed into a land area of about either Texas or California times two. If you add Texas and California together, that would be the land mass of Pakistan. Um, Pakistan is uh, the world's second largest Muslim nation, 97% roughly, roughly um, are Muslims in Pakistan, and about a 3% of, of the population is non-Muslim. Roughly half of that um, are Christians. So about 1.5% of all of Pakistan are Christians today. But that, you think, well, that's 
you know, a, a small group, but that's almost 4 million people. There's 4 million believers in Pakistan, and one out of three don't have a, don't have a copy of the Word of God at all. That's a map of Pakistan. You can see some of the neighbors, Afghanistan, India, China. That is a map there of Pakistan. Those different colors there are regions or areas. Of the, 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 we do a lot of ministry in Punjab area and some down in Singh. Um, and we also have a, a minister up, uh, up in the northwest area, uh, Brother uh, Zakil, who ministers... Um, in Islamabad. So what we're doing now, every day, while whether we are here, whether my wife and I are here in America or we're in Pakistan, um, we are doing, uh, we do pastors and leadership conferences. We do evangelism. Uh, we do some crusades when we're there. We, we're focusing now on pastoral training. Um, we have a group of pastors that we, we have a monthly Zoom meeting where we come together and we're able to train because we're only able to travel a few times a year. And so, but there is a great need for the pastors and leaders in Pakistan for sound doctrinal training. I'm going to be honest with you. All of the crazy doctrines that are in America have all funneled in to these other countries. All the, all the, 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 the errant, I'm going to try to be politically correct, doctrines that happen in, Pakistan, in, in America find their way, especially into Pakistan. And so we're, we're working hard on, on training pastors and leaders and Sunday school teachers and entire churches on sound, biblical, Christian Classic Pentecostal theology. We do, when we're there, we do leadership conferences. We will rent a building. A, a, they call it wedding hall. It's a banquet hall. Um, it may be from anywhere from, a, it may seat 200. And we did, I think there, I have a video coming up. Uh, we had 800 in that meeting uh, coming up. But we do uh, two-day leadership conferences where we preach the message of the cross. We preach and teach them sound doctrine. We we. we provide them food during the services, during the, the day, and we, we have a tremendous time. The Lord has blessed us. Um, I was just in Karachi in May. Karachi is an area, uh, it's, it's the largest city in Pakistan. It is an area that we worked hard to try to get into um, because we wanted to get the, the, the Bibles into Karachi, and we didn't, we didn't have an avenue. We didn't have a, a, any really solid context, but the Lord made a provision, and he, he opened up that opportunity for us to get into Karachi, and we had a leadership conference there uh, when I was there in May, and the, the pastor uh, did this video, and hopefully it'll work for us. Kind of show you what, what we do.
Amen. Amen. That, that brother that was interpreting or translating for me, uh, he's there to my uh, left. His name is Pastor Tahir Victor Paul. And uh, he was the brother that translated. I don't, it was in my pocket. I probably lost it. The, thumb, the study guide on the thumb drive that we handed out the first time. Never, never didn't know who he was, didn't know anything. Our, our next trip that we took after that, uh, the Lord put us in, co in connection with him, and he is now the coordinator of our ministry. He was able to give his testimony on SBN when, he was, when we were there, I think, uh, last year. Um, to tell you a little bit about what God did in his life, he was raised, he was a seventh son. He was raised uh, to be, when he was born, his parents said, you're going to be, when he was an infant, they dedicated him to Allah. They said, you're going to be a Muslim preacher. You're going to be an imam. And he was raised with that understanding. And he went to school. Uh, he, they sent him to the best schools. And he was trained in the Quran. He was trained. He was being promoted and groomed to be a, a, a Muslim preacher, an imam. And when he was about uh, 16, 17 years old, he went to his teacher at the Muslim school. He says, you talk about Jesus, but you never talk about this Jesus in a good light. And his teacher told him, you don't worry about Jesus. You worry about Allah. He said, but I want to know about Jesus. He says, don't worry about Jesus. Don't. He's none of your concern. So he went to some Christian friends that he had, and he said, I want to know about Jesus. Will you tell me about this Jesus? And well, they were scared because of the, the, the climate of Pakistan. He said, we're not going to tell you about Jesus because it's illegal to, to convert someone from Islam to anything else. Not only is it illegal, it, will, it can cost you your life. So his Christian friend said, we're not going to tell you anything, but if you, want to, if you really want to know, we will take you to our pastor. So they went to his pastor, went to the pastor. He said, I want you to tell me about this Jesus. I want to know about this Jesus. And his pastor said, if you really want to know about Jesus, he gave him a Bible. He said, I want you to read this Bible. So he took the Bible. He went home. His, uh, a few days later, his mother found out he had a Bible. And she says, you can't have this in my house. You get it out of my house or we're throwing it away. So he took the Bible. He went back to, his past, to, to the pastor. He says, I can't have my mom and dad say I can't have this in my home. So I'm bringing it back. He says, but I still want to read it. And the pastor said, well, if you want to read it, you can come to my house and read it. But you can only come after dark where no one sees you. For two years, side by side, he compared the Quran and the Bible. For two years, side by side, read both books back to back. And after two years, he gave his heart to Christ. He was 19 years old. He went to his family. He said, I'm, I'm no longer Muslim. I'm a Christian. They said, no, that's not possible. A few days later, they had a quote-unquote family meeting. And his parents were there, his other brothers, his sister, his grandparents, and all of his cousins were at the home. And they went and they said, they told him, you either renounce Christianity and come back to Islam, or today's your last day. Today's the day you die. How would you like to be confronted with that? He says, I cannot. I've given my heart and life to Jesus. I am now a Christian. And they said, if you renounce Jesus and you go back to Islam, come back to Islam, your life will be great. Your, everything will be fine. But if you don't, you're going to die today. He says, I can't. I can't. His cousin reached into his, this is, we call them our Pakistan pajamas. This is a shawar and kameez is what they are. That's the traditional dress of Pakistan. He had a cousin reached into his vest and pulled out a handgun. And the distance between myself and Sister Cornell, he pointed that gun at him and pulled the trigger again, 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 again. It went click, 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 click. His family beat him. I have seen the marks on his body 
20 plus years later where his family beat him. They called the police, they arrested him, he stayed weeks in jail. When he got out of jail, that pastor that shared the Bible with him adopted him. He's never had any form or sort of contact with his natural family. He changed his name. That was now his dad. That was now his mom. And he has all new brothers and cousins. And they're all Pentecostal preachers in Pakistan. And God put us together. And now he's, he's on my board. He's our coordinator. He coordinates all of our service. He does all, when we, when we do the teaching for the pastors, he does the, the, all the interpreting, all the translation for us. When we, when we go through another study guide, he's the one that goes through them and converts it over to, to Urdu. And he's just, it was awesome for him to give his testimony. So this was, this is, uh, I want to try and go through that, but this is some, the, uh, one of our pastor's conferences. This was about a year ago. The first time I was able to go into Karachi, um, this, this place here was special when we went we were making plans to go uh, and distribute Bibles we and we were going to do a, a, a conference and brother brother pastor Paul's what we call him pastor Paul said I want it we need a building for about 200 people and then they started advertising and more people were signing up for the meetings than and we it went from 200 to 400 to 600 and two we kept growing and we needed a place to, to hold this meeting, and they were able to arrange that meeting hall is owned by the Pakistani Navy. We got to preach the gospel in a building. There was roughly 800 people inside. Um, there was 200 people on the outside. We got to preach the gospel. We got to share and teach and preach to pastors and leaders. We fed them as well, but there on the bottom is roughly the... the part of the crowd that was on the outside. We couldn't all get in. We had to shut down the meeting a little early because there was some quote unquote trouble in the neighborhood. And so we understood that and we got out and, and were able to, to, to leave uh, peaceably. We also do evangelistic crusades. This is in Lahore uh, about uh, last year, I think. We're able to do, op the good thing about doing open air evangelistic meetings like this is anyone can come in. We've had Muslims, many Muslims that will come into a meeting because it's open air. It's okay. They can come in. They hear the gospel. They hear the message of Jesus Christ. And we've seen Muslim after Muslim accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And so God's given us a, a, a great opportunity uh, to do that we, we, uh, in, in open air evangelistic meetings. A um, couple quick pictures. One of the greatest things that we have been honored to do is the Bible distribution. At least one out of every three believers in Pakistan do not have a Bible at all. So we started in 2020 smuggling Bibles in our luggage. We had 50 Bibles maybe. We don't, I don't remember how many we were able to bring in. But we also were able to, to smuggle in the thumb drives. And so we would be able to bring in, you know, a couple hundred copies, 300 copies, I think, our first trip, and, and to go from there. But we, in 2020, we began smuggling in our Bibles in our luggage. Um, and we were looking for an opportunity to bring the Bibles in in bulk. Anything coming into the country, is, it's a process. It's extremely difficult. Everything that comes into the country is taxed heavily, about a 40% tax. So anything you bring in, the government says, what's its value? Okay, we want 40% tax on it. But there was, it was a very difficult situation to get the Bibles in. We talked to person to church and ministry leaders denominational leaders we talked to uh we, we had we had talked to the pakistan bible society and they didn't seem to be interested but when we went in 2022 one of our trips there uh we arranged a meeting with the pakistan bible society and we went in and met with the director and we sat down and we handed him we brought bibles with him, we handed him a bible so this is what we want to bring into the country we can i can get as many bibles in this country as you're willing to, allow, to work with us to get us through the process. We need you to get us through, the, work through the process because all their Bibles come through that process. They know how it works. 
We met with him. We gave him six or eight Bibles. We had lunch. We left. About two hours later, he calls me. Will you bring us more Bibles? Other people in the office want to see them. I said, yes, sir. We went back, brought him more Bibles. They said, thank you. We left. I didn't know if they, if it was a good meeting. They, they kept their cards close to their chest. We didn't know. He said, We're, our board is going to have to look at it, and our board will decide if we'll work together. I said, okay. So we uh, finished our trip there. I come back. I, I, my normal habit is I, I get up very early in the morning. So I got up the day after we returned, and I got up like at 4 or 5 in the morning like I normally do. And I look, I'm, I grab my phone, and I had a, missed, a, a message from the director, uh, the marketing director of the Bible Society. He says, we want to help you get Bibles into Pakistan. Hallelujah. So now I'm faced with this. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. I got excellent news, and I can't tell anybody. I don't keep secrets. I tell everybody everything I know. <laughs> My wife's snoozing. Everybody I know is snoozing. I'm just, all right. So I, I message Sister Nikki, Nikki Tracy, at the ministry in Baton Rouge, and I said, because I got in trouble for texting her earlier, so I sent her a Facebook message. When you get in the office, call me. So... She, she, she called me later. I said, okay, um, are you sitting down? She says, why? I said, I got news. She goes, okay. I said, the Bible Society of Pakistan is going to help us get the Bibles in to the country. She said, what? She says, we've been trying for years to get the Bibles in. You've been trying. I've been trying. We've been trying together. Nothing. The Bible Society said you, they will work with us in the process. And they did that. So we, we were able to, it, it took a while to get everything and all, everything, I won't go into all the details because it a, it's a crazy process, but God has an, enabled us. And in January of 2023, we, reserved, we received our first shipment of Bibles, an entire shipping container, a 40-foot Connex trailer, holds 12,500 Bibles, in cases of 12, no pallets, hand stack, top to bottom. And we received our first shipment of Bibles in January of 2023. They went through customs and all that process and another process and another process. They were finally released to us in April of that year. And we took possession of them and began to distribute them. And uh, June 8th, well, let me, let me set this up a little bit. When they, the ministry said, you need 12,500 Bibles? Yeah. How many do you need? Whatever you want. And I got scared. I'm going to be honest. With you. I was scared. I said, how are we going to give away, hand out 12,000 Bibles? So I said, can I get half now and half later? And they said, no, it's too expensive to go through the process. You get them all now? Or I said, okay. So we received them. In April, we started distributing them in April. By the end of the year, we were out. We'd, we had given away all 12,500 Bibles. And I went a few months earlier, I went to, to Baton Rouge, and I, I sat down. I said, they, they, we, we were talking about the Bible distribution, and, and, and they asked me, so how many more do you need? And I was going to ask for two containers, 25,000. And on the way, driving from where we live to Baton Rouge is about a little over an hour away. The Lord said, ask for three. I said, Lord, that's 37,500 Bibles. He said, ask for three. Okay. Get in the office. How many? Told them what was going on. They, they, were able, you know, they keep track. They were watching what was happening and everything. They said, how many Bibles do you need? I said, can I have three containers? They said, yes. Matter of fact, they're already printed. And all we need to do is start the process. They're already printed, ready to go. We just need to get the Bible Society to do the, you know, start that process. They're ready to go. Now, if you watch the Bible thons, one of these Bibles is twelve is twenty five dollars when you donate, and four million plus Bibles have been handed out. We received in June of this year thirty seven thousand five hundred Bibles.
And that equates to 937 thousand five hundred dollars is what people gave to provide Bibles to Pakistan nine hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars but God has opened the door and we're giving them away seven days a week and so we're thankful for that when we go, they, we do Bible, dis Bible distributions go on every day. We've got Bibles in schools, in churches, in uh, Bible schools, in Bible colleges. We have the Expositor Study Bible in the Catholic Seminary in Lahore. <laughs> uh, we give them, we, 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 t we handle the distribution. We don't just give somebody Bibles and, okay, I'll distribute them. There's, there's rules. There's, there's, they have to be given away. There can be no money exchange. A lot of times people will say, we're going to give you, we'll have, they'll have conferences. We're going to give you a free gift or a Bible or something. If you come to our conference, the Bible is free, but it's going to cost you to come to the conference. We, do, we cannot do that. We will not do that. Everything, all of our conferences, all of our seminars, everything that we do are absolutely free. We cover the cost. We cover the cost. We bus pastors in from other villages. We rent the meeting hall. We provide the food. We take care of all the distribution. When the Bibles are, were sent to us the, and when they were released from customs and became our possession, we are responsible for transportation. We're responsible for the warehousing. We take care of all of that, and we are able to provide these. for So when we do conferences, we make sure they know where they come from. We make sure that they know what's, uh, what, what God has done. That's up there in the upper left. Brother Cornelius is in Lahore. He is, our, he, is, he is an awesome brother. He handles the majority of the distribution. Um, when we were in Karachi, the one in the middle, that's when the government uh, security guards that was there to protect the meeting, he, he and his partner got Bibles. Um, the bottom right is me and Brother Kerry in our first trip. Um, these are a couple of distributions. Our pastors are doing distributions in different parts. Three, we have three distribution centers. We have one in Karachi down south, one in Lahore, and we have a pastor in Islamabad, uh, Brother Zakil, who does distribution in the northern part. Just some real quick, that's Brother Zakil there. Um, Brother Zakil is the first ordained World Evangelism Fellowship minister in the nation of Pakistan. He's a good brother. We met him on our very first trip. Uh, and and it's, it's wonderful. He's just a great brother. And that's some of the distributions that he's done, uh, that we've done together over the years. It's just been a tremendous blessing. Also, I'm going to try and hurry because there's something I want to get to. Month, we do monthly leaders and pastors training uh, via the Internet. Uh, this is just a screenshot of one a few weeks ago or, uh, or so. That's Brother Pastor Paul that's with us. I think it, it was this one. I don't know if I got – I didn't get a screenshot didn't screen grab that one but we had one church in Africa the pastor had been in in our meetings and when we announced the next one we usually do them the first Saturday of the month uh, he had a he set up a whole conference of pastors in his area of Africa and we had and he brought in a big screen and he he shown it on there and we had 314 members in Africa at one of our, uh, our leadership conference. So it's, it's been a great blessing. One of the things that's dear to our heart, and I, wanna, I wanted to, to bring this out, there is a big issue in Pakistan with modern slavery. We hear a lot about human trafficking now, especially with the, the election going on. But modern slavery is a terrible situation in Pakistan. In Pakistan, Pakistan is a caste society, C-A-S-T-E. You know, we have people on different levels of society. Christians are at the bottom of the bottom. Christians are the poorest of the poor. Christians, if they can find work, have the lowest jobs. It's the Christians that are in the sewers that are working in the sewers. It's the Christians that are doing the housekeeping, if, if, if they can find that. They have the, the, the lowest caste in the society and they get the worst jobs. So what happens is when something happens in their life and, and they have to go to a doctor or a hospital, they don't have a safety net like we have in America. They can't do Medicare or welfare or anything like that. So they have to borrow money. And what they'll do is they'll borrow money 
from the, the owners of the brick kilns. Everything in Pakistan is made by brick, and all of those bricks are made by hand. And so they will go to a, the brick kiln owner and say, I need to borrow 300 U.S. dollars because my wife is having the cesarean section to deliver my children. He'll give them the $300. He says, but now you're going to come work for me to pay off your debt. In Pakistan, there's four and a half, they believe, about four and a half million workers in the brick kilns. There's 20,000 brick kilns in Pakistan. It's harsh labor. It's dangerous labor. The, all these bricks are made by hand. They have a quota that they have to make every day. Usually it's about 1,000 bricks that you make, that you're required to make. If it rains and you can't make bricks, that puts you behind. And it's not just dad that's out there. Dad and mom and all the family are out there and working and making bricks. They have extremely deplor deplorable conditions because they live on site. These small loans go in, spiral into generational debt and generational bondage because if, if you borrow $500 and I'm a brick kiln owner and I said, okay, to pay it back, you have to work so many produce so many bricks, I'm never going to tell you how much you owe or how much you're working. There's no open books. So that family is forever in debt. They can never pull themselves out because all the, all the brick kiln owner has to do is just not eliminate the debt. And so it, it spirals into generational debt. If the dad dies, the rest of the family stays. 70% of the bonded laborers are children who inherit the debts of their parents. This is an, a, a news article that I pulled. This is a situation. This is how they work. Those bricks are made by hand. The entire family works. This brother, Rawal, Rawal Masam, he, he was a, a Facebook contact of mine. He and his family worked in the brick kilns. And the upper right, that is one of, one of the actual kilns where they take the bricks that have been folded and, and molded and dried in the sun, and they take them and put them in that furnace to, to uh, uh, cook them. There's a, a better term for that. You, with pottery, you put in a brick kiln. That's a, a, the, the kiln. That's where they drop, put the, the, the bricks in for them to be uh, baked, for lack of a better term. Brother Masa fell in to that brick kiln. The brick kiln owner refused to turn the fire off for over two days. And that looks like a, a disc, that metal disc. That is what his family was able to recover to put in the coffin to bury him. That was all that left after two days. Yeah. God's laid on our heart. We call it Operation Freedom, Path to Freedom. God has put it on, on our heart to help. I have on my desk at home, I've got seven, a file with seven families and their situation on how to, on, that, are, that are wanting to be brought out of this modern day slavery. We estimate, it's going to vary by situation, but we estimate for, to, to pull an entire family out of modern day slavery is of roughly about $5,000. Now of that $5,000, um, we're going to purchase, pay the debt to the kiln owner, the brick kiln owner, pay their debt off. The problem, if we just pay someone's debt, is they don't have, they're, they're stuck in that situation. They don't have any means to live. They don't have any means to provide for themselves, so they're going to go back into debt. They're going to be in that situation again. So our plan, our goal, what we're going to do is we're going to purchase them, out, of, pay their debt. Out of the seven files I have on my desk, the highest debt is about almost $1,200. An entire family is a slave for $1,200. We can pay off that debt. We're going to relocate them to one of our Christian communities, one of our Christian colonies. Christians live together in colonies for safety reasons, for other reasons. We're going to relocate them to one of our communities under one of our pastors. We're going to help them find a motorcycle or, or some form of transportation so 
they, and, and take care of their, their housing for a short term, maybe two or three months, so they can come out of that place of bondage, come out of that, that lifestyle that they're in, put them in one of our Christian communities with one of our local pastors, provide them housing assistance for a few months so they can uh, join the workforce and be able to take care of their family on their own. And we're going to do all this with a, with, under the umbrella and the assistance of a Christian community that will be there for them. The pastor will be there. That community will be there to bring them through, bring them out, and allow them to get to where they need to be, not only in, in, in physical freedom, but in spiritual freedom as well. And roughly what, it's gonna, what we figure it's going to take is maybe around $5,000 for one family. And so we're, we're doing everything that we can to, to make that happen. Um, what we've done, what uh, we have, a, we had a dear lady in our church in Louisiana in Abbeville. She saw what we were doing. Lord put it on her heart to make. She calls these freedom blankets. These, it's a hand crocheted lap blanket. And she said, "Lord put it on my heart. I'm going to make these, and you can give them to people that help to do what you have to do to help people." in Pakistan get out of slavery. So she's made these. She's selling them in, around Abbeville and her family. Everywhere she goes, she's selling these. And so, so I brought one. I've got more in the vehicle, but one of these, well, all we're asking, if, if the Lord puts it on your heart and you would like to help bring a family out of slavery, if you can do $75 or whatever best you can do, if you want one of these, let me know. I've got a few with me. I don't want to sound like a commercial, but I just want to give that opportunity there. If that, if Lord puts that on your heart to, to, to work with a, a family in Pakistan and bring them out of slavery, that option's there. I'm going to move ahead. Um, boom, boom, boom. Come on. Click. Oh, I got to point it the right direction. Um, real quick, how we got to be where we are today, and, and especially in the Bibles, uh, back into, as I mentioned, 2023, the, the JSM donated, gave us 12,500 copies, 1,042 uh, cases of Bibles we just received. Uh, three more shipping containers, 37,500. We, the Lord has allowed us, by his help and his grace, to see over 50,000 Bibles reach the shores of Pakistan. And we're doing everything within our power to get them in the hands of pastors. And the good thing is, uh, if you're aware, that the Expositor Study Bibles normally are, are directed to pastors and leaders because of the limitations there. Um, Brother Swagger has said, I want those in the hands of everyone that can read English. If you're, and so we, we are able to distribute Bibles to anyone. And, he, and Brother Swagger says, the, the door is open. As long, as many Bibles as you need, you let us know, and you got them. He said, I want to see millions of Bibles in Pakistan. Yes, sir. We're going to do our best. So we're thankful for that opportunity. Uh, our vision for, th for the remainder of this year and beyond, um, we've had to change a few things. Our plan, we were, we were setting up a, a missions trip for November of this year where we were hoping my wife and I and others, we were, we were going to go in and, and uh, do what we do, the, the crusades and the teaching and all of that. Um, and... What happened is Pakistan refused us visas. They don't give you a reason. In the process, they sent us a note that says, we want to know why you keep coming back to Pakistan. And we travel now under a tourist visa. And uh, they said, why do you want to come to Pakistan? So we told them, you know, we have family, that, friends there that are like family. We love Pakistan, et cetera. And they just refused us, um, which they do from time to time. Um, so we've just move on. We'll be back in March, uh, February or March of 25, and we'll go again. But our vision is we're going to continue to increase our missions outreach. We want to reach all of Pakistan. We want to see that pa there's, a, there's a move of God happening in Pakistan. The, the hunger in Pakistan. These people will, when we go and, and, and have our meetings, the, the, the service may start at 6 o'clock. We show up at 8.30, and they're still doing praise and worship. These people have a hunger for God, a, a worship 
spirit. They will worship God for hours. They love God immensely, and there's a great hunger for the, for the things of God in Pakistan. So our, our desire is to increase all of our missions, everything we're doing in Pakistan. We're going to continue to travel, continue, uh, uh, do, continue our ministry in Pakistan, the ongoing ministry that goes on every day while we're here. Um, we're going to continue our Bible distribution. Our goal is to get this translated into Urdu. If we can get this, this translated into Urdu, everyone, we will be literally able to give away not millions of Bibles because everyone reads Urdu only some of not some of the younger people and the more educated are able to read English and we make sure we delineate that when we when we do a Bible distribution we make sure they know where the Bibles came from how they got there and and they are free of charge but you need to be able to read English and so that's, that's one of the responsibilities that we have. And so we're, we're, we're praying that the Lord will open that door to translate it into Urdu. Urdu is an extremely, not known to us, but it's a, it's, it's, there's tens of thousands of people in America that can read Urdu. Uh, so we're, we're believing God's going to open that door. We're going to continue teaching, training, spirit-filled leaders in Pakistan. Because when we're not there... We need indigenous pastors to be able to lead their churches. Those pastors, you know, we, we come in and we do what we can, but those pastors that are there week after week after week and leading their churches, we want them to be rooted and grounded in truth. And we're, we're doing everything we can to do that. So we're trying to disciple and lead, uh, uh, raise up spirit-filled leaders in Pakistan. And we're planning on going through every door that l the Lord has opened up. We're, we're hoping very soon to go back to Indonesia and to bring Bibles and to bring the gospel into Indonesia. Indonesia is an open door for us, the largest Muslim nation in the world. And the Lord is opening up a door for us to go in there and to reach them. Uh, United Arab Emirates is also an open door. And Something that the Lord just recently put on my heart. We don't know how it's going to work out, but we want to travel into Bangladesh and see God do something special. I'm going to hurry up and close. We're, looking, we're, we're raising our funds for the budget for an upcoming team trip uh, that has been pushed back to March. We need probably any, depending depend on how much we're able to raise is how much we're able to do, but our, our trip is going to cost us between twenty dollars and $30,000. It pays for our travel uh, and that, but the greatest expense is renting these meeting halls, busing the pastors and teachers in, uh, and the, the leaders of the churches, and feeding them. They, 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 can't afford to, they can't afford to travel, and they can't afford to uh, attend a, a meeting or a seminar or a conference or something. So we, we come in and we do our best to take care of that. Uh, so that we're... we're also believe in God to meet all of our ongoing expenses when our, our storage, the buildings that we're storing the Bibles in, uh, the transporta transportation from one area to the other, um, and the, the cost of the Bible distribution themselves. We're also going to provide freedom for seven brick kiln families is what we're believing God for. Um, and we're also the open doors in Indonesia, the United Arab Emirates. That's who I am. I hope I didn't bore you. I hope what I said and made sense. I hope, I, I hope you understand my heart a little bit. I am honored that and, and, and taken back by what the Lord has allowed us to see him do over the last five years. It was five years ago that I first, first went. And the Lord's opened doors and made provision. And we're... we're I never, when he spoke to me in 1987, that's a long time ago. And it was 30 some odd years later that the Lord opened the door. And he said, now. I remember I was in a service when I went back to Baton Rouge to go to school in the 90s. And the Lord put something on my heart. I was up in the choir. I was, in, I was in the choir, and the Lord put something in my heart. I won't go into the details. And when it was started dealing with me over this situation, I was set in the choir loft. It was a camp meeting service. And I found myself, 
I turned around and I was on my knees, bawling and squalling. And I said, yes, Lord, if that's what you want, yes. And he spoke something to me. He, he said, it's not the yes that you tell me now. When the Spirit of God is moving, we'll, we'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way when the Spirit is moving. And the goosebumps are going on. He said, it's not the yes that you tell me now. It's all the yeses you're going to have to say until I bring that to pass. I don't know what your promise is. I don't know what it is that you're believing God for in your life. It's easy to say yes now. But there's a lot of yeses that you have to make between then and the fulfillment. There's some no's that you have to say no to. But I know I'm a living witness that his promises are true. The promises of God are yea and amen. Had a t-shirt years ago. It came from Baton Rouge. Promises of God are yes. Yea and amen just means yes. I had a t-shirt that said the promises of God are yes. That promise that God has put on your heart can I give you the answer tonight, this morning? The promise of God to you is yes. You're going to have to say some yeses between today and when it's brought forth. I praise God that this church is buying a piece of property. Five years. Pastor, your pastor was telling me there's other churches that started around the same time. They would fight you tooth and nail to buy that church. But the promises of God are yes. The promise in your life is yes. Thank you for this privilege, this opportunity. If, if you, my greatest request from you, Covenant Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, is pray for us. Pray for those that we have, our, our team that is in Pakistan. You'll read at times of persecution going on in Pakistan. We've seen that. Our one gentleman that worked as our security on one of our trips, the local Iman allowed someone to get on. Every, every town has a loudspeaker <laughs> where they five times a day they, they do the Muslim prayers. He May, he, he gave permission. A guy got on the microphone over the whole community in Jarnwala. And the end result was 5,000 people, radical Islamists, came and attacked a Christian community. They burnt 26 churches, 200 plus homes. And the gentleman, the news report says there was no deaths, but one of the gentlemen that worked as our security guard lost his life in that situation. Pray for us, not only the provision, I know God's going to meet that need, but pray for our safety of, of us, but pray for the safety of these persecuted brothers and sisters in Pakistan that are, that are living in squalor, that are facing persecution. Every day I get news reports of, of young girls in their early teens being pulled off the street, falsely converted to Islam and being married away, forced marriages. If they're converted to Islam, there's nothing they can, they can do. So they'll falsify this, her, their conversion. Pray for us. Pray for what God's doing in Pakistan. We are blessed to be a part of what he's doing. It, it's not me, trust me. I'm the last person that I would pick to do something like this. Why God said, 21-year-old, wet behind the ears, thought he knew everything, preacher from Central California and Bible College first year, Bible College thought he knew everything. Hmm. Had, to, uh, had to learn a whole lot since then. But God's faithful. He who promised is faithful. Pastor, I'm a, if I don't hush, I never will. You know, as you 
as you can tell, what we have here in the States, uh, we can often take it for granted because we have so many freedoms here. And just seeing the pictures, it can seem as if, well, that it's, as if it's not even real. It is, of course. But because of such a, uh, an indifferent culture, an indifferent environment, and the different pressures that they have, it can, it can seem so disconnected. But you know, I know it's Brother Kenny's prayer, it's my prayer as well right now, that we would, this morning, as, as a, this church, that we, would, that we would sense the connection that God, that we have with those believers over there. They're believers just like you and I, serve the same Jesus that saves and heals and, and, and sets people free. But the pressure that they have and, this, and the culture, everything is so different from us that they need what Brother, what, what Brother Kenny is bringing. They need that, that ministry. They need the Bibles. They need the Word of God. They need ministers like that. They need, they need uh, as he mentioned, native min, uh, ministers there that are, that are from that nation to write, for God to raise them up and and continue those churches they need that and and our prayer this morning is that that we would be able to bless them and help them help brother Kenny and financially as much as we can but also with our prayers amen and I'm gonna ask you brother Kenny can you come and just stand right here we're gonna pray can we all stand to our feet right now and would you just extend your hands out to Brother Kenny right now? And those of you that would like to come pray, you're more than welcome to. But Father, right now, we just lift up Brother Kenny and, and his wife Tammy, Lord, and, and his whole team. And Lord, we just pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. And we plead your blood, Jesus, over them. We ask you, Lord, that your hand of protection would be upon them and your hand of provision. Lord, your hand guided them there and, Lord, your hand will provide and protect. We believe you, Lord, for open doors in the days to come. That, Lord, there would be, a, a, Lord, that, that possibility and the, the reality of the Bible being translated into Urdu. God, we believe you to do that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That you would strengthen Kenny and those days that he would face this Encouragement. God, we ask that, Lord, you would, that he would sense your presence. And, Lord, just confirm to him that, Lord, you've called him for such a time as this. And we believe you for great and mighty things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, something that Brother Kenny said is that, and so, what's a powerful truth, that, that the yes, the Lord spoke to him, what the yes now, that's important. But the yeses that you will say from now into the time of fulfillment, they are important. They need, we need to say yes, amen, to the Lord. And I'm going to ask Brother Steve if he can come and bring the, just put the offering basket right here. And I'm going to ask you to, to give an offering, to give the best offering that you can. And those that are watching online, you can go to our, our website and just push, push in the, the special speaker. And you can give a donation that way. We'll make sure we get it to Brother Kenny. And so, again, give the best that you can. Even if it's whatever you have, the little that you have is something. And it's important. So let's pray this morning. Father, we're just so thankful for this opportunity, Lord, to bless this ministry in order to bless ministers and, and people and, and believers in Pakistan. We believe you to bless this this offering and multiply it for your glory's sake and bless the giver. And we say it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Why don't you come and give this morning? Praise the Lord. I say yes, Lord, yes to your will and to your way. I say yes. you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes so I'll say yes Lord yes to your will and to your way I'll say yes Lord yes I trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord 
on one more time. Let's sing it today. Yes, oh, I, I say, say yes, Lord, yes. clap of praise today hallelujah praise the lord well god bless every single one of you remember the services we have tuesday uh thursday by prayer meeting right here at 10 and then men a men's bible study this coming saturday at 9 a.m once uh, before you leave can you just shake brother kenny's hand and and if you're able to before you leave but god bless you and have a wonderful day